hello i'm back if you're seeing my face for the first time hi i'm zo nice to meet you if you're coming back thank you so much for coming back what the fuck you like me or something <laughs> okay so today i wanted to make a video about something more heavy so just a forewarning this is one of the heavier ones just because i i've been just because in one of my last videos, I think it's one of my most recent one, I'm, I kind of touch on how I had a crazy weekend last weekend, which is why I'm giving you guys bonus episodes and why the video on Monday was late. Again, I apologize, don't be mad at me. But it was late and all of that, you know, is happening because I had a crazy weekend. Like, that shit was intense and like heavy. And I had to do something really hard. I had to basically break up with my best friends of two years um, at the same time, uh, kind of, you know, quick. But I mean, even prior to that, like, I just feel as though I've been doing a lot of introspection lately, like these past few months. I've just been doing so much introspection and I don't know if it's because my birthday's coming up soon or what like I really don't know why because I mean I'm always very an existential introspective overthinker like all the time it's exhausting but lately it's been like a lot more and I guess more about more specific things in like my life and just really I guess like really closely evaluating everything that I'm consuming and like what makes me who I am, if that makes sense. And so along with that came my friendships that I held in, in my life. And so <sighs> with all of this introspection, I've had a lot of moments where I really, when I really look back on it, like this year, like this 22nd year of my life, I have gained and lost so much, like so much, so much in not only in romantic, in the romantic sense, but in the platonic sense, in the familiar sense, like in every aspect of my life, in my 22nd year of living, I have gained and lost so much like more than i ever have in my whole life and so i just really wanted to make a video about it especially since i'm turning 23 soon in a couple days and so i feel like this is kind of like a full circle moment for me and i don't know in case you're going through the same thing too so the reason why i broke up with my friends um without going too much into detail and like revealing you know too many personal details i just I guess to sum it up, long story short, uh, the reason why I felt as though I needed to, I guess, break up with them was because I felt as though we were reaching, where we reached, I guess, a tipping point where this can either continue, like for myself, like I can either continue to do this and live my life this way, or I can choose this other path that's going to be harder, that's going to be more uncomfortable. Sorry, my other light died, so I had to use my big one. But that's going to be more uncomfortable and honestly kind of come with more, I guess, challenges. Like, I guess the only way I know how to describe it is, like, the reason why I felt such, like, prompting to do something, like, right in that moment. Because I had no plans to, like, I guess, break up with them that night, like, at all, like, over the weekend like yeah like certain things had been jumbling around in my head but i didn't make any like definitive plans of action to i guess do anything about it it was just like still jumbling around in my head but the reason as to why i felt so incredibly prompted and just so like like at a crossroads with myself and like my soul in a way is because if you let it life will sneak right by you it'll just sneak right by you because life is sneaky that way time is sneaky that way and it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter how rich how popular how pretty no one can ever escape 
time and time of life it was more so like well what kind of life do i want to lead you know like what kind of what kind of person do i want to be what kind of impact do i want to have on people and they were my best friends you know and we were friends for like two years and throughout those two years like we were good friends and i genuinely felt as though i could envision myself being friends with them for you know the rest of my life and i was hoping for it at one point in time and like i felt so safe and like close and like seen by them at times um but then it just it reached a point where i felt as though again the person that they met when we first met is no longer here because so much has happened between that time and now that we can ignore like not only with myself and like my development my personal development but with the world and we need to stay grounded within the world not in the sense of like you have to change as the world changes like no obviously not but you do have to take into account where we're at in the world you can't just live your life well i guess you can a lot of people do but at least for me, I don't want to live my life like that. I don't want to live my life with my life just passing me by and me only paying attention to the things that make me feel safe and comforted and fucking happy and shit. Like, I don't want to turn a blind eye to things just because they feel bad and uncomfortable and, you know, they're not my problem. I don't ever want to be that person and I don't ever want to let myself get to the point where I have the potential to turn into that person because i look at so many people and i don't know why but i always just thought that when i was little that grown-ups had it all together and they just knew everything and they were just so smart and they just knew everything i always felt that way when i was a kid but then it wasn't until i was like a teenager that i started realizing like you guys don't know what you're doing either you guys are doing the same thing that kids are doing because it makes you sad, because it makes you uncomfortable, you don't want to deal with it. And when you think about this, and when you really acknowledge and accept that this is the world truth, then you could recognize everywhere in which it is in the world. Like, there are so many people who are addicted to drugs because, you know, it's really hard to do the harder path, which is, you know, trying to get clean. And so they'll just they'll just stick to what they know because the other option is scary it's uncomfortable there's so many people who still let their childhood traumas hold them back from the life that they've always wanted because they were so stuck on a story that they created that they felt like they had to stick to even though it wasn't real the only thing that was making it real was them because at the end of the day what the fuck is even a story it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and that's it. We're all with stories. But just because you come from a certain story doesn't mean that you have to be a certain person. And I had such a hard upbringing, and I have worked so hard to get myself to the point in which, in which where I am today that I don't ever want to go back. Like, I don't ever want to go back and i don't ever want to like fast forward my life i want to be here right now i want to be present and in order for me to feel present i have to feel like i'm living my most authentic self and so if i want to live my life that way where i want to be fully present i want to be my full authentic self then i can't bullshit myself then i can't hang around people who don't see recognize acknowledge appreciate my authentic self to be loved is to be seen and if you don't feel seen then you do not feel loved then what are you doing with that person you don't need another person to feel seen to feel loved to feel recognized to feel special you don't need another another person to do that for you you can do that for your damn fucking self so for me, it wasn't like, oh, but I'm going to be lonely, but I don't... Because I'm being fu so fucking for real with you right now. Now that I don't have those friends, I don't have any other friends right now. Any other, like, friends that I can actually call my friends that I, that I can confidently say that I trust and, like, love. 
I don't have anyone else. They were, they were the ones, you know, for so long. But, and I knew that. I knew that I obviously wasn't going to have that even after I'm done being friends with them. But I didn't let that stop me because I know that it's not going to be like this forever. Just because I'm in a season of life right now where I don't really have friends and I don't really, you know, have these things, it doesn't mean that I'm not ever going to get them. It just means I don't have them right now. But it doesn't mean that they're not on their way. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week. It could happen a year from now. But it's going to happen. Like, I'm so young. There's so much life ahead of me. And it doesn't matter how old you are right now. There's still life ahead of you. And so if you're just constantly just being worried of like, oh, but I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have... You're living in the lack mindset. Nothing good ever comes from the lack mindset. Because then you're just going to keep yourself in that lack. And so I felt prompted in that moment. Like, if I don't... If I don't choose myself, choosing myself in the way of like staying true to my morals and my values, which are, I do care about what's going on in the world. I do. Like my morals, my values are very important to me. And I'm not ever expecting or demanding that people in my life have the same exact views as me. No, of course not. But there are certain things that are my non-negotiables. With, with all the horrible things that are happening in Gaza and Rafa and all these places in the world right now, I cannot and I will not turn a blind eye. Just because it's happening millions of miles from me right now doesn't mean that it's not my problem. It will always be my problem. Because if another human being is being killed being murdered for no fucking reason and they're completely innocent and it's just happening over and over and over to mothers to children to fathers to families to kids who didn't even get to see their like first dance or like their first like partner like they just had their life completely stolen from them it doesn't matter that I don't live there. It doesn't matter that I, I haven't ever even experienced even 1% of what they've experienced. Because what will always matter at the end of the day is that they are human beings. And that is not right. Period. It's not right. So if I could do anything, literally anything, just to help in my tiny, 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 minuscule way, even if it doesn't even make like 1% of an impact, I'm still going to do it. If no one is noticing it, if no one knows that I'm doing it, I don't care. I'm not doing it for those reasons. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. Period. Innocent people dying is never going to be okay. And yes, if you are giving your money to these corporations that are giving their money to fund the weapons that are helping further that and continue that violence, that, uh, that injustice, then yes, you are a part of that injustice. You are a part of the problem. And I will not associate myself with you. I will not be friends with you. Because that is where I draw the line. That is what is important to me. Those are my morals. Those are my values. And I don't think, and I will never think that I am out of line for this. Because I think what people are forgetting, especially people my age right now, is that I know what's going on in the world right now is so crazy that it's literally like out of a history book. And because we're so young and it's so far from us, we, I guess they just want to detach themselves from it because it is so easy to detach from it, especially if you live in America. It is so easy to detach to it and to just pretend like it's not happening and go about your day to day because it's not affecting you. It's not affecting you. You can't even begin to imagine what they're going through. So you just go about your life and you just shut it out. And you just keep on watching your funny videos and you keep on doing your regular things because it's easier, right? 
but it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, you get to go to sleep and they are scared for their lives. And that is the world that we live in. That is the reality in which we live in. And if you choose to not live in reality, then you are part of the problem. And I cannot associate myself with you. And that's what, and that's why I had to do what I had to do. I had to stand up for not only myself, because, you know, it wasn't just only about that. It was like a plethora of things, but that was one of the biggest ones, you know, like I just, I can't do it. I can't. I know it's easier and I know that because trust me, it's already happened to me. Like I've gotten made fun of. I've gotten told that I'm dramatic, that I'm sensitive, that, you know, just whatever. I don't care. I don't care. Because I don't even want to be associating with people like you. So why the fuck would I even care about your opinion? So yeah, I do care if you are still getting your little Starbucks drink. If you're still getting your little McDonald's. If you're still so willingly giving your fucking money to these horrible, disgusting corporations. That don't even give a fuck about, about human lives. It's disgusting. And so... I really just reached a point where it's like, I either continue to live my life, I guess, in the shadows and, you know, cowardly, I guess, because I didn't, like, I had a feeling that, you know, they weren't, I guess, that supportive of it, but I wasn't sure until that day, you know, that I, that I kind of ended it with them, but in, you know, once once I was sure of it, I was like, I really had a, it was a moment where I had to face myself and it almost stopped being about them and it just turned all on to me because it's like, okay, well now you have a choice to make, you know, because you can continue, you can never tell them about this and you can still, you know, have your own beliefs, whatever, and, you know, do that. But do you want to? Do you want to be that kind of person that does that? Because then how is that any different from me being a lesbian? Me being a part of the community, the gay community. And the discrimination and the prejudice and the judgment that gay people still to this day experience. And with racism as well, you know? Like, it was all okay until one day it wasn't. And so, do I want to be a part of something just pretending that, you know, it's not happening and, oh, I don't need to think about it. Oh, I don't need to worry about it until I'm forced to. And then, oh, fall into line and, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then just follow the bandwagon. Do I want to be a stupid little sheep like that? No, I don't. And I don't care if it makes me unpopular. I don't care if it leaves me with no friends. Because at the end of the day, I have to stay true to myself. And by me staying true to myself is me staying true to my values and my beliefs. Because if you don't have any morals, if you don't have any values, if you don't have any limits, if you don't have any boundaries then you don't know who you are. Then what are you really? What are you w without your beliefs? Without what makes you you? What, without what fills you up? Without your passion? You're just a shell. You're just a shell. Just existing, but not living. So, <sighs> yeah, it was, um, it was a hard thing to do. And I came home and I... I, I talked to my mom about it and, you know, I, I told her and, she, you know, she even told me herself like, well, okay, well, you know, you can't expect everyone to agree with you. And I'm just like, and I'm not expecting that. I'm, I wasn't ever expecting them to agree with me on every single thing that I believe. We, we were never friends like that. But now that I knew for sure where they stood and I confronted them about that and I basically told them that 
yes, I will not associate myself with someone who partakes in that, who, who doesn't care. And they understood that and then they still chose to do what they're doing. Then, yeah, I can't have people like that in my life. Because the way that we think is completely different. Because I don't know what the fuck is going on in your brain that makes you not care. That makes you have this lack of empathy. I don't know what the fuck is going on with that. I don't know why the fuck you're like that. But it's not my problem. And it's not my business. And I'm not ever gonna try to fucking change you. Because that in itself is already worrisome to me. So that in itself just already tells me everything that I need to know. And I do not want to be around people like that. Because I will never be like that. So yeah, it was a really hard thing that I had to do, but... I think that the closer you get to yourself and to really standing up for, because you can know who you are, but I guess to stand up for, I guess, who you are and the things that you're made up of being who you are is kind of different because I feel like it's it's when it it's really put to the test. And I feel like it's really about courage, I guess, because you do stand alone, like you do. And not everyone can handle that. But the more that you stand alone, especially standing alone, firmly grounded in what makes you you, the very essence of you, the goodness in you, that shows you such, that shows you and that makes you feel such an unshakable love and knowing of yourself and only good could ever come from that i promise you so if you're also in a season right now where you know it's kind of a lonely season for you and it has been then i need you to know that it's gonna be okay and this is all temporary because this is just a season and seasons come and go just like people and people are a part of life and life is made up of seasons. Seasons are a part of life. Everything is intertwined. So don't feel sad when people leave your life, when you have to cut people out of your life, when people cut you out of their life because the more that you understand and can appreciate the time that you did have together and the experiences that you did cherish and got to have with them, those aren't tainted just because you guys aren't, just because your story reached an end, that doesn't just automatically delete or get tainted, just existed within its own time and it reached a natural end and that's okay. Because that is what life is about. Some people will stay and some people will only be a season. A season of your life, a season of teaching you more about yourself, a season of you growing, a season of you being heartbroken, a season of whatever it may be. But you still learn from it, whether it was a good or bad experience. But regardless, it's an experience. And that's the only point of this life. Some people will stay for just a season and sometimes they'll stay for a lifetime. So I know, and I know that it's hard because, you know, we do get attached to these people and, you know, maybe, and I think that that attachment honestly kind of stems from the feelings that we've once felt with them, you know, because we, I once felt so safe, so seen, so I guess loved by them and just because they're not in my life anymore and I don't want them to be in my life anymore, it doesn't change the fact that I did still once feel that way because that is still going to exist within its own bubble over here. And that's just what it is. So to not even necessarily send them like hate or like misfortune or any of that, it's just you're at a certain point in life right now and I'm just not there and that's okay that's okay and we don't have to agree and we don't even have to get along because this world is so big 
that we're able to do that. You're allowed to outgrow people. You're allowed. And if you've never heard that before, then I'm telling you right now, you are allowed to outgrow people. You are allowed to no longer feel seen by the people that once made you feel the most seen in the world. And that doesn't say or mean anything definitive about you. If anything, it just shows how much you're growing. And so, like I said, the more that you stand firmly grounded in who you are and the very essence of who you are that you know makes you feel seen and understood by yourself, the closer you are to that life that you've always wanted, to those people that you've always wanted in your life, to that job that you've always wanted, to whatever it may be that you've always wanted. You're at one step closer. Because the more that you know yourself, the more that you love yourself, the more that life will reflect that right back to you. Because who you have in your life and the kind of people that they are and the way in which they treat you and other people as well is a direct reflection of how much you love yourself. So just please think on that. And... Um, yeah, I guess the duality of friendship is so much deeper than we ever really take into account. And I wish that it was talked about more because I feel like so many relationships are always talked about and like, you know, the heartbreak of that. But like the heartbreak of friendships is also very real and also very hurtful. You know, what whether it be, may it be a betrayal or a mutual, you know, I guess break off or whatever it may be it is still hurtful because I feel as though friends are so important because they make us feel seen in a platonic way which is the only way that friends can only ever make you feel and that's a special connection and I and that's why I don't give up on friendship and I don't let myself turn bitter because I was always the lonely girl growing up. I never really had a lot of friends and I liked it that way. And just because I am in the season of life right now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to let that, you know, turn me bitter or like make me think something about people when it's okay. And I still recognize just how important friendships are. And you know, the duality of friendships relationships i feel as though like you can't just put them on the back burner you just can't and if you think that how you treat your friends and how you treat your partner is so drastically different then i implore you to to question that a little bit more because when you really think about it it's not all that different it's not i take into account my friends love languages so that i can be a better friend to them I listen to my friends and what they desire and what they want, what they need so that I can be a better friend to them and vice versa. And when the duality of friendships comes up of, I guess, the light and the dark, you either, either let that continue and recognize that this person is still going to be a part of your life and potentially maybe even your child's life. You're immediate family's life, etc., or they won't. And really, that's how you have to think about it. And so when you think about it that way, it's not all that different, right? Because you're thinking with that with a romantic partner, but because it's a friend, you're like, oh, well, you know, I'm just, I just have fun with them, or, you know, I just go out with them. But how you spend your time and who you spend your time with says everything about you. What you guys choose to do and how you guys choose to spend time together says everything about the friendship. How they speak to you and how you speak to them and how you guys show up for one another says everything about both of you as people and as a friendship. So really, is it that different? No. And so friendships are one of the most important human connections that I think we can ever have, which is why I agree with having standards for friends as well. 
you know standards can't only stop at your partners they have to leak out into every single part of your life and standards and boundaries and values and morals really are what make you feel free i know it can sound limiting but really it's what makes you feel the most free because once people know that once people know those things about you then they know you more and that allows you to be seen and to be better loved by them and vice versa so yeah you know it's pretty it's pretty crazy but um i'm just i just know and i almost just feel like no matter what happens i'm gonna be okay because i learned how to exist with myself and love myself and know myself and i'm not even religious but you know even in the bible it says like know thyself is like constantly a thing that it goes back to and again i'm not religious but i just think that it's really all it's about just getting you closer to yourself and that can manifest by the friends that you have so sometimes you gotta take the road that's more uncomfortable and harder and lonelier but so that you can have the more fruitful outcome the more bright the light at the end of the tunnel will be i guess so yeah if you're also you know not having friends and you haven't had them for a while hang in there bud i know it's hard but it's not gonna be like this forever i feel it i feel it right here so yeah i just wanted to just want to touch on that you know kind of just have this like i guess heart to heart one-on-one -on -one conversation with you um since i do feel like i have reached a lot of full circles in this year of my life um not only with my ex but you know now with my friends and my family and so so a loss isn't always a loss sometimes it's a gain and maybe you just can't see it right now but it doesn't mean that it's not still being constructed you know behind the scenes so just just wanted to i don't know chat with you chat about that so Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you watched until the end, until this point right now, please put a black heart so that I know that you're a real one. I would really appreciate that. And yeah, just thank you so much for watching. And if it is also nighttime where you are, then I hope you have a good night or day, whatever, wherever you are. And I will catch you for the next one.